Hey guys, my name is Rob Noir, and today I have a very special video for you that's a little bit of a throwback, and it's all about this thing right here, the Game Boy Color. So way back in the day on the channel, I actually used to have a series called Can I Fix It? It was all about fixing broken retro games and tech, like consoles, handhelds, controllers, games, all that jazz. And I eventually stopped doing the series because pretty much all my retro stuff was working. I managed to fix it all on video and then had no more issues. But maybe nine months to a year ago, I came across this broken Game Boy Color at a convention, and I was able to pick it up for a steal. It only cost me five dollars. But the reason for that is this thing has kind of a lot of problems. Now I'm not going to do anything crazy here. I'm not going to try and like install a backlit screen or mod it or anything like that. I think that's reaching a little bit far when the thing itself doesn't even work properly. Now I also want to say at the top of the video here, I'm not an expert. I'm not a professional at fixing these. If you require the services of an expert or a professional, I would recommend checking out someone like Voltar, who does a lot of great stuff fixing and modding retro consoles. I'm just your average guy with some basic soldering skills and the know-how, and I'm going to attempt to fix this thing. And the reason we're going to try and fix this thing ourselves and not send it to a professional is because, well, most of the issues that this thing is going through should be pretty easy fixes. If you have one of these lying around yourself that's kind of having the same kind of problems, you might be able to fix it yourself. So first off, what's wrong with this thing? Well, I've diagnosed four different issues that we're going to have to fix here in this video. So starting from the simplest and easiest one, it is really dirty. Like, it's very gunked up. The buttons stick when you press them. It's even a little bit sticky, and I don't know where that came from. So obviously the first thing we gotta do is give this thing a very thorough cleaning. Now the second issue, which shouldn't be too tough either, is that the screen on this Game Boy is very scratched up, dented, it's got like pock marks. You can tell this thing was used a lot by its previous owners. And so we definitely wanna fix that up, swap that out for a new one. That also shouldn't be too hard. Now getting into something that's a little bit of a bigger problem is the fact that the speakers on this Game Boy Color do not work. Now if I plug in headphones into the bottom jack or if I plug it into speakers like I'm about to do here, I still get sound through. So there's a couple different things that could be causing this problem, but at least we do get sound. So there, as you can see, we are getting sound when we use speakers. However, when I unplug from speakers, absolutely nothing. So this is actually a pretty frequent issue that you'll run into with Game Boy Colors, and I'm pretty sure we'll be able to fix it here without too much of a problem. So the final issue here, and the only one that I'm not 100% sure that we're going to be able to fix, but we're going to give it our absolute best, is that this Game Boy Color will actually shut off randomly after about four to five minutes of use. Like you'll be playing for four to five minutes and then it will just die. If you flick the switch off and then back on, it'll start working again usually, but this is a little bit of a bigger problem, so we're going to try and diagnose and fix that as well. So yeah guys, that's exactly what we're going to attempt to do here. If you have a Game Boy Color with a similar issue, you can probably follow along and figure out the steps as you go. I'll try and be as informative as I can, but yeah guys, let's jump right into this. So the first thing that has to be done is obviously disassemble the Game Boy. And something that might not have picked up that well on camera here is that there was kind of like a lot of gunk and even corrosion where the batteries go inside the Game Boy. And this could be contributing to issue number four. We'll know more as we go along. What you're going to need to take this Game Boy apart is actually a tri-wing screwdriver. Now these are not common. If you don't already have one, you'll probably have to order one. There are a total of six screws that you'll need to take out with the tri-wing screwdriver, four around the edges and two inside the battery compartment. And as soon as you do that, you should pretty much be able to just pop the back right off like this. And then when looking at the interior of the Game Boy Color here, there's another three screws that you'll need to remove, but these are actually star screws. You'll need a star screwdriver to remove these. And at this point, you're able to take out any of the buttons around the side, and you can even lift up and flip the board over. It's now only attached to the screen. To remove the screen is really easy actually, you just push up on these two little tabs next to the ribbon cable here, and then a trick is to get a small screwdriver, just put it underneath the cable, and just gently force outwards. This should pop the cable right out and you're good to go. So at this point, the actual board, the internals of the Game Boy Color, and just lift right out. What you're left with here is basically this empty shell which has these button pads which you can remove. I also noticed that the front part of the speaker has actually flown out. So this here, that's another sign that, yeah, that speaker's broken. You can also push these very gunked up gross buttons out. 
then all that's left in this casing is basically the screen. Now if you want to take the screen out, you can. What I suggest is a very small flat head screwdriver. You just want to work into the corners and very gently put pressure. Very gently to each corner. As you can tell, I have worked on Game Boys before. And then right here, we should pretty much just be able to lift that right out, yeah. So that, that is your Game Boy Color screen. And it's, it's nothing really special to look at here, pretty basic. This is more or less how you would go to install a new screen if you wanted to do so. Again, that's not what we're doing here though. So there's a few steps left if you want to fully disassemble everything, but at this point, you probably don't have to unless you need to give it a really deep clean like I do. So now is actually the easy step I was talking about, which is just cleaning all these plastic parts. So I'm going to show you two different things you can do, both of which are equally effective. Now the easier way to do this, which will help with like the stickiness, a lot of the gunk and get rid of all of that, is actually just to get a small bowl, put in some warm water with dish soap, and then soak the plastic pieces in that. Now please note, I do not advise doing that if it has stickers or other material on it which can be lost, but for example, all of the little buttons, these little buttons can easily go in there, and the front here has nothing that would come off. So the only part on the Game Boy Color that I would not advise is actually the back part. And now you want to leave that soap for a good 10 to 15 minutes, maybe even more if you want to. So while that's going on, we can work on the second method over here. Just get some Q-tips. Get a nice thing of isopropyl alcohol. Grab a Q-tip, get a little bit of alcohol on there. Kind of like the universal cleaner when it comes to retro games. And then just work it through. Just use it to kind of clean up all the gunk. Now this might take a little bit, but it'll get the job done pretty well. Now I did mention the issues I was having and how the battery terminals looked a little corroded. You get a little bit of that isopropyl and just kind of use it here. You just want to kind of clean and polish up this stuff as best as you can. And hopefully this could be a good step in solving my Game Boy turning off problem. And so while we have this here, I'm also going to clean up the battery parts that are on the board itself. A lot of like the dirt fell out when I opened this thing up, so there's not a lot to do, but it never hurts. Okay, and in the time that it took me to do all that, what's been soaking in the sink should be ready. All right, there we go. Obviously I got some paper towel, which I'm just gonna use to very quickly dry it off. And then the finishing touches, if you see that there's any dirt left, which there is a little bit, hit it with the isopropyl again. I'm not sure quite how well this is picking up on the camera here, this thing is very pockmarked. It's got a lot of scratches, a lot of dents. So what I did here is I actually ordered a replacement screen, the exact same one that was on it before. Got this from Rose Colored Gaming. They're a very awesome website. They make like stands for handhelds and consoles and some DIY kits and parts such as this replacement screen protector. I'm popping it out here. It feels extremely high quality. It feels very good. So we want to put this on. First thing we're going to have to do though is remove this one here, which can be a little tricky. You just want to apply pressure to the different sides over and over evenly until eventually it will pop out just like this and then you can just kind of take it off. First thing we got to do is peel off the adhesive backing. I usually just push all the way against the top and then it more or less will snap in. And there we go. That is looking really good. Now again, I'm not sure how well this picks up in the camera. But it looks very good. The only thing that's a little scuffed is this adhesive that we can peel off. And there you go. A beautiful screen protector. Now you could put this to the side now, but what I'm going to do here to get ahead is just pop back in the buttons and the pads so that everything's good to go. Okay, so now that we've done the two easier fixes, it's time for the two larger issues. The broken speaker and the turning on and off. So this is jumping a little bit ahead here, but for step four, the fact that the Game Boy turns on and off, I did mention that I did clean out a lot of gunk from the battery connectors here. As well, something I noticed is that the on-off switch itself is extremely dirty on the inside. So it's possible that it is catching on something, and that could be causing this on and off problem. 
And having done a quick examination of the board and a quick test as well using this thing, there's not any obvious broken components, so it seems like that's the most likely answer. So I'm actually just going to clean out that on off switch with some isopropyl and we're going to hope that that has fixed it. We'll know for sure at the end of the video. And yeah, that's actually worth noting. This was actually really hard to move before and now it's sliding super easily after that cleaning. So that's a good sign. I think we might have actually fixed this one without having to worry too much. And now for the other large issue, which is this broken speaker down here. Now there's two different things that could actually be causing this problem. The first, and I noticed that this here is a little bit depressed as if it's always on, is the headphone jack could be in a state of always on. Now if we clean this out, that could fix that problem, but I have a feeling that it's more than that because it's also very common for the actual speakers on a Game Boy Color, like you can see here, it's pretty, pretty chewed up already. It's very common for these speakers to stop working. So trying to clean it out here has yielded no results. If need be, I can remove this component from the board. But I'm going to take a leap of faith here and assume that this here, this broken speaker, is probably the problem. So what you want to do actually, if you have a broken speaker, is just go on eBay, order replacement speakers. You can find these. They are not expensive. I think I paid about $8 for the two, which is ironically more than I paid for this entire Game Boy. But you can find these on eBay, speakers for Game Boy Color. And what you're going to need to do here, and this is where you will need some basic soldering skills, just desolder the speaker from the Game Boy Color and resolder in your replacement speaker. Now you might notice they are a tiny bit different in style, but they are the same size and should in theory work the same way. Now again, I'm not an expert, I'm not a professional, but I do have basic soldering skills and I'm going to be employing those to do this here. If you don't have these, if you're not comfortable with doing this, you might need to send out the Game Boy. But this is a pretty simple job, all things considered. So I just successfully removed the speaker. Again, really did not take all that much effort. Now I'm going to have to re-solder this speaker in its place. Now these are tiny points that you're soldering to, so it might be a bit of a hassle, but it shouldn't be too bad, all things considered. Actually, that was like incredibly easy. Like one of the easiest soldering jobs I've ever had to do. So hopefully that actually fixed the sound issue that I was having with this Game Boy. Before fully reassembling the Game Boy Color though, I'm going to reattach all the main components and see if that did actually fix the problem. Oh, 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 oh. If you guys can hear that, it 100% worked. And the sound quality is the same as I've come to know from a Game Boy Color. So then the last thing that I'm going to actually do here is leave this running for five or more minutes to see if it shuts off. If it does not, that means this was 100% a success. Okay guys, so as of 15 minutes later, this thing is still running perfectly. So this thing has never run for more than five minutes in a row, and it now ran for a full at least 15, probably closer to 20 since I'm doing dialogue right now, with zero issue. So I'm considering that fixed. This thing's a win. So all we have to do now is just reassemble it, put it back together, and make sure all my games are working, right? Alright guys, so it's a couple of days later and I've been playing around with the Game Boy Color ever since then to make sure that all my fixes have worked and have held. And so far, it's been great. It's been working perfectly. There's been zero issues. So as a result of the very deep cleaning, the buttons no longer stick. They're as responsive as they should be. And the case of the Game Boy, it's no longer sticky and grimy. The new screen protector looks very nice, very shiny, and seems quite resistant. So I'm pretty happy with that. And if ever there's any kind of issue or if it does get scratched, 
patched up. I'll just order another one. It's super easy to install. The sound issue has been 100% fixed. It now works when you play it through the speaker on the device itself, and it still works when you play it through the headphone jack, which is what I was expecting anyways. So the sound issue, not an issue anymore. And finally, the whole shutting off after a few minutes thing, well, that is apparently taken care of as well. I left this Game Boy on for more than an hour, non-stop, and it ran perfectly. It was still going strong. I was actually worried that maybe the batteries would die, but they held up good. It ran for a solid hour. And I've also played for a good two to three hours with some of my favorite Game Boy Color games, and it's worked fine. No longer does it shut off. So I guess it really was just the pieces that connect to the battery were a little corroded, and the on-off switch also had a lot of gunk in there, which probably contributed to it as well. So yeah, guys, this was a complete success. This is awesome. This broken Game Boy Color that I bought for $5 is now completely working. If I wanted to resell this, I could for way more than I paid, but I just want to have this in my collection. I just want to be able to take it off the shelf and play, and now I can. So yeah, guys, hopefully if you're experiencing some of the same issues with your own Game Boy Color, you can kind of use this video as a guide and kind of work through them and fix all of them. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, definitely don't be afraid to leave them down in the comments below. And as always, guys, I will see you in the next video.